Welcome back to Solar Impulse TV, live from the Mission Control Center in Monaco. My name is Kari Lundgren, and it is a pleasure to welcome you back. We are 20 hours into Solar Impulse 2's flight across the Pacific. Bertrand Picard is doing quite well. We're about a third of the way. And with me now, I have one of our mission engineers, Leila. Uh, uh, and she was also Capcom on this flight, so speaking directly with the pilot for half of the flight, uh, for half of the morning, I should say. <laughs> um, and maybe you're going to, hopefully, you're going to tell me a little bit about how the flight has been going so far. Bertrand is going into nighttime. Uh, uh, yeah. There and yeah. He's so how's it going? He's currently middle of the night at his position. So um, he, the night is quite long. So we have to um, proceed uh, the whole loitering altitude at about five thousand feet. So he is at five thousand feet and sleeping, resting, trying to relax, and to get to get as much sleep as possible. Um, at the first stage of of this flight, so. Um, when we descended and we tried that the pilot can sleep, it was uh, quite difficult to find a spot where we have calm air that the... Um, We're zooming in here. ...that the uh, autopilot can work. So at a certain stage, a certain stage of turbulence level, the autopilot is not able to handle the aircraft anymore, and so the pilot cannot sleep. Actually, this is a good chance. Why, tell me a little bit about the autopilot on Solar Impulse. It isn't your standard autopilot is it? No, it's actually a stability, a stability augmentation system so it's monitoring um, the aircraft in a certain way so that uh, for example... We've got can gremlins in the system. All right, there's Hawaii in the bottom corner and there's Solar Impulse up there. <laughs> um, yeah, so it keeps the wings level. Either the wings level or uh, the, the aircraft in a certain heading. So. Um, it's uh, normally in the heading hold mode, so the aircraft is moving towards a certain heading. Which and, and so the pilot turns that on, and then he can have a rest, but how, what happens if something happens and he needs to wake up? So we in the MCC, we are monitoring uh, certain parameters of the aircraft, so if we see some turbulences occur, um, then we wake up the pilot. Um, he has a normal uh, wake-up uh, button call um, where he will be waked up every 20 minutes, but yeah. uh, in between, if something happens, we can wake up the pilot as well. Uh, talking to him or even pressing a wake up button um, with a loud noise. And the pilots have actually trained during simulation to respond quite quickly because if it's sort of a, a problematic situation, they have to jump to it right away. Correct, and this is quite difficult, I think, because if you're really sleeping and then um, if a turbulence occurs and you have to immediately return to the controls, it's really hard, especially in the night if everything is dark and I think it's not easy for the pilot, so he's doing really well and we're all happy that he gets some rest now. Well, and this is one of his, well, I mean, the full flight will be his longest flight ever. Mm -hmm. I'm actually trying to remember what has been his longest flight. We'll have to, do you remember? It, I think it was the flight from uh, Chongqing to Nanjing. Ah, okay. So it was approximately 20 hours okay. uh, without sleeping, so he was um, just, it was just a day flight, a long one, but... Um, there he managed well, but now it's it's a different style of flight because it's a really long mission flight where he has to get the rest. So he's going beyond his own experience now. Definitely. Yeah. Has he been able to rest at all? Is he? I mean, we know that he's uh, he has self -hypno hypnosis is his preferred way to relax. Yeah, he has also some some headaches, so he he tried the self hypnosis to to help him to recover there. Um, for the first. Uh, uh, for the first part of the flight, uh, in the night, he wasn't able to, to rest a lot, but now we found a spot with the help of our metrologists um, where we do not encounter a windy situation and there the turbulence level is really, really low and he can sleep. So now he's sleeping for approximately one and a half hours with the regular wake-ups, mm -hmm. but um, he's doing well and I think he's getting happy now. <laughs> yeah, getting, getting more relaxed. Yeah. Um, tell me, it looks like we're deviating a little bit from this mm -hmm. proposed flight path, simulated flight path? A little bit, yeah. We, we, uh, we missed one waypoint. Actually, we d on purpose, <laughs> because... Um, <laughs> Is that over here somewhere? Yeah. Uh, the reason for this was um, we have been at high altitude over here, and we tried to gain as much energy as possible. So we turned um, the tail of the aircraft into the sun, so mm -hmm. uh, towards the west that he get as much solar energy as possible. And that's just to make sure that the, the, w sort of the, the wing of the, the plane tail, is yeah. facing, sort the, of has the, the most, yeah. yeah. 
is facing the sun, and this was um, this situation over there. And he managed really well, and he um, he managed to to get 20 minutes plus. So. Uh, compared to the calculation for sure. And therefore we had this slight deviation over here. Uh, and now he's heading back to, to the desired track. And it's well, we're about a third of the way. Maybe we can see the plateau chart, which we were looking at last night with uh, Michi, who's one of the flight directors. Here we go. Um, so maybe you can point out where we are on this chart at this point. Um, currently we are approximately here. So again, this is the altitude of solar impulse. This is the energy. And Correct. then these are, mind us again? Uh, the the low-level cloudiness over the route. Um, we're currently an, at the lowest level, so we are loitering during the night. This is the night phase. And um, he's approximately here during the night, um, three hours to go until sunrise, um, and in the sleeping mode. And I think he's fine. Underneath he has a cloud layer, but this is just going up until uh, 3,500 feet. So he's fine above the turbulences and yeah. So it's key going well. key thing here is what's the battery state of charge? So how how's the ba how are the batteries doing? Uh, the batteries are according to plan a little bit above. So um, we are a little bit above our planned uh, simulation. So uh, he's really trying to to fly as as optimum as possible. So he optimizes his his speed and um, his climb and sink rates. So he's doing really well and we are above our plannings, so. So there's all these, I mean, because that's really what, you know, when you're flying solar impulse, it's all these different factors that you have to Definitely. bring in, because if you can, you can fly a little bit higher and get more energy and potential energy, but Correct, then yeah. it uses more battery power, so it's all these, Correct. all these things that you guys are having to calculate and do here, it's <laughs> yeah. tricky. Yeah, we are a little bit uh, below our altitude profile, but we are, we are well above our, our uh, battery state of charge, so um, that's fine for us, because um, bet Battery energy is much more worth than altitude, so we are happy with this uh, solution and, and this, um, yeah, this status now. Excellent. Well, you're just in the briefing now. Any sort of updates on what's what to come on any challenges? Is landing still looking pretty good? Yeah, actually the route um, totally is looking good. We have a small deviation of one waypoint, but just one degree more to the south to avoid the cyrus clouds during the day um, of the next day. Um, but beside this, everything looks good, and uh, the landing condition in Moffat are still looking very good. So we are planning uh, to land, yeah, uh, in a couple of hours, I think. Well, couple, <laughs> I think yeah. uh, forty hours. <laughs> so a couple of uh, let's see, this is what happens. You obviously, I think you need some rest, but it's, it's good. There we go. And this is actually, yeah, I'll zoom in on the, on, the, uh, on the airfield itself. This is so southeast of San Francisco. I was, uh, I was being very simplifying, oversimplifying yesterday. So southeast of San Francisco in the heart of Silicon Valley, yeah. that is Moffett Airfield, a very mm -hmm. historic, special airfield. Uh, in, yeah, and during aviation. day, it's, it's a quite windy region, but um, when the sun sets, it's getting really calm there. And this is, this is our point where, where we're aiming for the landing. So looking good and uh, we do not expect a lot of cloudiness so excellent fine. well we as I was saying earlier we passed 18 hours which is quite a symbolic point for solar impulse because 18 hours is the amount of time it took Amelia Earhart to fly from Hawaii to the west coast of the United States she apparently only ate one boiled egg some tomato juice and some hot chocolate. Oh wow! I know <laughs> quite, but I think she it was it was a quicker flight. So I think Bertrand hopefully has been having a little bit more. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> I have to say he ate uh, very very few stuff, but um, I think he will eat if he wakes up. So yeah, start eating more. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time, You're welcome. Lila. Um, our next show will be an interview with. Uh, the, one of the executive board members of Solvay that will be at 1600 G, uh, UTC. I need to get that time right. And, uh, and there's lots coming up. It is Earth Day, and there we have uh, Boyan Slot from the Ocean Cleanup who will be uh, speaking to Bertrand and uh, many other exciting guests. So stay tuned. <laughs>